हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू अनदर जंगल कनेक्ट एंड आई हैव समबडी वेरी वेरी एक्साइटिंग टुडे दैट आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक टू सो हिज नेम इज़ यूजीन डैनी लैंको एंड ही हैज़ अ वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी ही इज़ वन ऑफ आर अर्लीएस्ट कस्टमर्स प्रॉब्ली फॉर फॉर यू नो द जंगल वर्क स्टैक एंड ही इज़ द को फाउंडर ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट ऑन डिमांड कंपनी इन एंगोला द कंपनी इज कॉल्ड टूपूक and it means you know urge to eat something in uh, in the local language so you know this guy is is literally the person who has helped us build our product in a great extent right he has like given us so much feedback and he has taught us so much and you know we are super grateful to him for his time not just this video but in general you know because he just we just keep uh, ping him pinging him for all the all the you know product feedback and stuff so so hopefully you like it and uh, you learn and you know you learn a lot and you see how you can actually find opportunities in unexpected places and build large businesses there so hope you enjoy it thank you very much yeah so you are from russia and yes, right. uh, yeah tell me like this is super interesting <laughs> man so you are well the thing is by uh... First, I graduated from medical college, and I was working as paramedic uh, in Russia. In, in Russia, in emergency, so it was you know. Uh, Which city from in Russia? Uh, in Siberia, from the city called wow. Omsk. Yes. Well, Omsk, I know. You know, Omsk, Omsk is. <laughs> I mean, I've heard about it. It's like one of the coldest cities, or something like that. You know. <laughs> Well, it's a quite large city from the border with Kazakhstan, and that's okay. uh, my homeland. Well, then uh, after some short-lived career in uh, param as paramedic, uh, I started from ground up uh, working in pharmaceutical industry as a warehouse worker, just moving boxes, left and right, wow. up and down. and i was doing so why this. why did you why did you get from <laughs> paramedics to to warehouse working well this is you know this is a story that might be appreciated by many who's uh, right now struggling so as a paramedic i was working for like uh, sometimes over 250 hours a month so wow. and, and then my salary at that moment was Less than hundred and fifty dollars a month. A month. So that's not like people in India get more than that. So well, that was nineteen ninety seven in Russia after the country was absolutely broken down after USSR yeah. died and everything was so. Right now, it's hard to imagine this kind of living. People in hard places in Africa earning much more right now. Anyways, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I moved to moving. I started to move boxes because that was I doubled my salary just by changing my career from educated medical, uh, you know, uh, personnel to to professional to somebody who can be as dumb as that box he's moving. Anyways, yeah, uh, that was for a while, and then I started my career there and uh, promoted. to assistant of the head of warehouse then i moved from my hometown to headquarters in moscow started my career in uh, a security department and there was started to you know travel a lot in russia learning mm -hmm. uh, about different businesses people and uh, then i worked for 6 years as project director in ngo in moscow for a large international uh, ngo and then in 20 uh, 2009 decided that's enough i want something more and uh with my wife we moved to new zealand where my daughter was born and then w was it easy to move to new zealand i he i heard like you know it was very tough no, to move no. from russia in those times well uh i've read yes. this uh, we i this read this novel the first novel actually i read was we the living by ayn rand it's it actually ends when you know this this girl uh, you know runs away from the border they're like shooting at her and stuff like that oh so, my goodness 
Well, nobody was shooting uh, at me, but uh, <laughs> it took me uh, 17 months to receive New Zealand visa. And that was student visa. And this is where I started my uh, IT studies, studies. Which, was, which was always my passion. And mm -hmm. then I can then we moved to Tanzania and where I uh, then in in the process I finalized my studies in RMIT University Australia uh, okay. as in, in computer science. I learned some marketing, economics and behavioral things. And uh, after Tanzania that was Angola and uh, it's now seven years plus since we moved in Angola and uh, six years since we start Tupuka. And why, why Angola? I mean, you know, because uh, like most people, when they think of like places to move, they don't think like Tanzania, I can understand, you know, there's like, okay. uh, in fact, at some point I, I got a visa to Tanzania. Okay. You know, my thinking was I'll go to Tanzania and set up a, a like a furnace, like a, you know, where you melt iron ore and kind of, you know, you, you make iron, you know, and then make uh, stuff from iron. So that was my plan actually also at some point, Okay. Uh, you know, but I, I never ended up doing it. I got the yellow fever injection, you know, shot. Of course, and I got, have uh, to. Yeah, I got the visa to Tanzania, but never went. So, and started Click Labs instead. So, <clears throat> why Angola? Well, that, that moment, it was quite straightforward. Uh, my wife, uh, she was working for NGO, and that was her new assignment. So we mm -hmm. moved from Tanzania, where she was working, and uh, we moved to Angola. And for me, at that point, it was still, I was in search of where to apply my passion in IT and the management. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where I met people uh, with whom we started Tupuka. And that was perfect application of my passion. And mm -hmm. that's where the journey began uh, to, you know, to. So start how, how did the, so first let, let, tell me about the name Tupuka. I like the name, but I don't know what it means, you know. <laughs> well, it's uh, one of the local languages that uh, it means the urge to eat something. Oh, so so you like basically hunger or something like that. <laughs> basically, a strong desire to eat, uh, hunger, yeah, I'm hungry. So because that was the food delivery, that's yeah, how, yeah, it, yeah. how it started. And uh, for, as a co-founder, Ericsson Vesey, he, uh, he decided to stick to the roots and uh, he picked up that local uh, and name. How, how many founders are you guys in, in Tupuka? And you well... Know, we started as uh, just uh, first uh, three of us. Uh, the first three guys met and uh, started to uh, play with the idea. Then mm -hmm. they bumped into some problem with software. And this is where uh, they met me by accident, totally. And I said that mm -hmm. I can help. And I start helping. And then uh, after a while, uh, our fifth, Co-founder joined us, and uh, right now, for 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 last three years, it's just three of us. Okay. Edison Vesey, founder, and uh, Wilson Ganga, and myself. Uh, we run uh, daily the operations and uh, try to, uh, you know, make it better, make difference. Yeah. And and today you do mostly food delivery, mostly grocery. Like, what's what's your business? How has it evolved? You started as a gross uh, business food delivery service, but how exactly? Did it so we we uh, because we've been first on the markets uh, in 2016. Angola uh, remains one of the rare places on earth where it could be uh, or can be actually first on the market with online delivery. Actually, I mean, it's very tough to find places where you can make exactly. first market with delivery. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, uh, I'm not entirely honest. There was a attempt. There were attempts to run this uh, through the websites, some stores, but we were first successful. That actually started and continued and uh, started to grow. And uh, but for most of the people in Angola, it was absolute novelty, and people be like, "Okay, where's the?" How are you going to scam around this? Like, this is not possible. That's not true. Well, and uh, uh, we started little by little, but uh, 
eventually we realized that uh, well the the restaurants kind of restaurants and people's habits they mm-hmm. you know are mostly around quite expensive restaurants so it's not like uh, there's there is not the the culture of street food mm-hmm. is uh, around very very simple food that has mm, you know, no, no connection in the people's head that you can't, you need to order this because you just walk the street and you see this uh, fruits or you see those, that bread or is, and it's cost like so little that uh, for us, it's not, was, was not even the reason to go after this. So we stick with restaurants and it turned out to be quite expensive. Therefore we uh, found ourselves in the very narrow niche. And uh, that's where we understood that's okay. New verticals necessary. And we went mm-hmm. after gro- groceries, pharmacies, started to uh, add pretty much whoever wanted to join and uh, like uh, toys, clothing, accessories, and uh, health products, uh, supplements, name it. And uh, that's what... Yeah. Essentially, that everything was, around around your city. And, and, you know. Essentially, everything. Uh, and that was more about the the willingness uh, of the business owner to mm-hmm. to try it. And, um, yeah. and that, that's, considering that Angola at that moment was, in terms of entrepreneurship, it was really offline. And it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's changing now. And I, you know, I, I, I dare to assume that it's thanks to us in a large extent because we been, you know, making it possible and people started to replicating us, people started to follow and mm-hmm. we proved that it works, that there are customers for this, there's market for this. Well, then that's, uh, that's uh, the market started to change. And uh, after adding new verticals, we realized more that, well, mm. there is also the limits and uh, you have to grow horizontally as well. You have to expand. And this mm-hmm. is where we started to go after investors so, or people who are interested. So tell us a little bit about Angola as a, as a place, because, you know, even I, when I, when I first uh, spoke to you, I remember I thought like Angola was probably like, you know, a little bit like a third world country in Africa. But, <laughs> well, uh, but you, yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, west, uh, on the west of the Africa, southern part of Western Africa, there is Angola. And uh, mm-hmm. this is a country of very young population of approximately 35 or more million with the uh, average uh, age, which is quite typical for uh, many African countries, uh, so very, very young. So it's uh, around maybe 18, 21, something like this average yeah. age. So the country is the second biggest in Africa producer of oil. It's uh, so, so, so let me stop you there. So guys, anybody who's listening to this, they should just search for Angola on Google and look at the yeah. images. It's not, so, you know, what you would expect <laughs> from, let's say, you know, a poor third world African no, country. So, it, yeah. it, it is not. And uh, actually, my personal impression of uh, in the, well, the first day of arriving in Angola from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, mm-hmm. when I arrived, I, I looked at my wife and said, like, wow, finally civilization. Yeah. Because well, we you came see- from <laughs> Moscow. So Moscow was similar, right? Well, uh, I came uh, to, uh, we lived in New Zealand first, and that's a cute, cute, nice, well-developed place. And Moscow, of course, uh, especially now, it's uh, very digitalized, uh, like everything on the top top of any possible uh, industry presented there uh, quite well with all specifics. But anyways... Angola is uh, was enjoying really good times with high uh, prices for the oil. So they, with all the difficulties, all the problems internally, they still invested a good deal of money into infrastructure, road, roads, highways, and which one of the most uh, important ones, education. So 
uh, in the area where I live, there are like three or four universities that uh, full of students. And uh, uh, you know, it, this is young workforce still required uh, uh, mm. to give place to get experience, to grow professionally. But uh, it's changed. If you check Angola uh, 20 years ago, that was totally uh, different. One important fact about Angola that to uh, to complete the picture is that uh, while the country was uh, uh, probably one of the most productive uh, in agriculture on the continent, and in South mm -hmm. Africa at least, it was under 30 years of war, which ended in oh, 19... Civil war. It was civil war that lasted over 30 years. And it's ended in 1990-something. I'm, I'm very sorry. Oh, it was ruled by Portuguese earlier? That's... Yes, so it's exactly. It's a former Portuguese colony that uh, since uh, independence, uh, they, the war started and it was long, exhausting, impoverishing, mm -hmm. awful times where mm -hmm. people struggled. And uh, of course, while the country, the country in war Talk about development is not, it's not possible. So Angola suffered big, big time then and suffers still because of uh, the consequences of that. Because the, the agricultural industry was heavily damaged, the mm -hmm. infrastructure was damaged, and uh, for many, many other things that affected the families, the businesses, and, and uh, whole life here. And uh, anyways, uh, that, that affected how people, you know, think, how people, what people value, what people appreciate, and which makes uh, Angolans as people very special, very difficult, different from uh, other people, other countries. Mm. So it's, uh, it's special character, uh, it's a special soul, and uh, it's special set of habits, and how do they how, traditions. How, and how do they how do they find it that you know a Russian per person has come from you know Russia and become an entrepreneur <laughs> in Angola? So you see a lot of times you know people don't become entrepreneurs in different countries. In US, yes, but not in you know African. Yeah. Well, this is a good question, and uh, the thing is that being Russian actually helped me. Because okay. during this civil war, Russia was supporting Angola. So, and still there's close ties between Russia and Angola. And uh, there is a lot, there are a lot of uh, joint ventures in the, mm -hmm. in, the, in the diamond industry, specifically in the minerals and other things in the military uh, sphere. So still being By just, way, just, I... yeah. By the way, I'll tell you one thing. Even India had close ties with Russia back in the day, probably yes. during that time. Yes. And yes. almost all the storybooks I read when I was growing up, they were all Russian. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so the, even the names, so, you know, even if the book was in Hindi or Punjabi, which is my, like, native language, and, but the names would be Mishka, Ivan, Ivanushka, <laughs> right? Yeah. And there was this uh, magazine called Misha, which used to come from Russia, like, you know, one month late. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I grew up uh, reading uh, Russian storybooks. Uh, and there was this, uh, this witch named Baba Yaga, you know. Of so, course, of course. The Russian version of Boogeyman, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I think, uh, you know, I've always, uh, like, had this, like, I've never been to, like, Russia, you know, actually. Oddly. You have to, you have but, to visit I have to, I, and I'm actually waiting for the COVID situation to get better. Uh, sure. And then, you know, hopefully we go to Russia and Ukraine very soon. So, yeah. Well, that's uh, just don't go there in winter time because it's going to hurt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, uh, just to pay you back, I will tell that uh, while you've been growing, reading Russian books, I was growing, watching Indian movies. Mithunchi Kraborty, okay. all these <laughs> things. That was fantastic. Uh, we've been watching... Which is, your, which is your favorite Indian movie? Well, uh, obviously, it's a, like a disco dancer. 
or uh, this. Oh, or yeah, my... yeah, there's this song, yeah. uh, I'm a disco dancer. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that was, at that time, yeah, it was Soviet Union, and that was Cold War between Russia and, yeah, and United US. States. So, no Hollywood movies, zero. We didn't have zero oh. American movies. So, all the blockbusters came from India. So all and they those... were they were they were <laughs> translated in Russian. Yeah, they they were full, fully translated and uh, well done. And it was okay. funny to see uh, in Indian actors speaking perfect Russian. <laughs> but that, yeah. that was, that was, I'm that sure if they, if they saw it, they would also be surprised. So <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, that was. Uh, uh, first uh, interaction myself personally with Indian culture and uh, that was big time. The whole neighborhood yeah. shut uh, down like, any activity when it was Indian movie uh, on TV and everybody at home watching. <laughs> In fact, you know, uh, I have a lot of Russian friends and, uh, you know, I think uh, now like right, India is more aligned maybe with US or I don't know who they are aligned with these days. But uh, at that time, India, Russia used to be very close. Well, uh, hopefully nothing damages this relationship and it gets better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Indians and Russians are definitely very close. So, you know, it's, uh, uh, well, it's a good thing. Uh, all my life is proving that relationship between India and Russia can be very good. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, when I look at my contact list, for one mm -hmm. or another reason, there's a lots of names. Indians. <laughs> and many of them from Jungle Works. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So, so yeah, tell me, uh, you know, like, tell us about the market. Like, is it still like low competition? Are you guys still the kings? Or do you have competition now? Yeah, walk us through well, a little bit. Well, the thing is that uh, one of the important things that's affecting the market developments in, uh, mm -hmm. in online business is the uh, strict limitation on uh, online transactions or online payment gateways. Uh, mm -hmm. Then the MasterCard is not allowed in Angola. Visa, wow. uh, not allowed for internal use, only for traveling still. Oh. And uh, Angola was under so strict sanctions from US and uh, there was uh, all the transfers between from to Angola being strictly, you know, for monitored and limited. So online business without online payment, it's a very strange thing. Very difficult, yeah. Yeah, and that, that therefore that was one of the moments that uh, stopped people to, you know, try even online business in Angola. Because uh, yeah. when we when we started, we only did uh, cash on delivery, and that's it. There was no other option. However, the market is changing and uh, the macroeconomics changing for Angola. So mm -hmm. we have now a uh, you know, central bank moving forward with issuing licenses to various payment gateways. And uh, there are some prospects uh, to uh, allowing Visa and MasterCards uh, being available so for do you local. Think like being a payment gateway is a good business there or visa is, is it gone well so being a big payment gateway which one i'm saying do you think like you know opening a good payment ah, gateway is, yeah. could be a good business there or it's is, I, is I, it I believe, like gone? I, I believe so because well as uh as for food delivery, 2016 was that amazing rare place on earth to start to be first on the market. And yeah. uh, it's, I, I believe right now, 2021, uh, it's uh, not quite the same, but very, very close for payment gateways because there is a little bunch of uh, payment platforms uh, extremely limited number of uh, ways to pay online well, i'm talking about uh, a handful of them mm -hmm. and uh, we have a large young population that's extremely uh, you know de de that desire to go online and do online stuff and that they entering this uh, to active uh, economically active age when they start 
you know, earning money, etc. And uh, uh, so basically they become consumers and uh, the potential for online gateways is huge. Because mm-hmm. as, so- as soon as they grow, as soon as they uh, dare to take challenge and uh, to go in this uh, not simple markets, then that will immediately trigger the reaction from uh, online entrepreneurs, people who will and, see how that can be working. And how do people or the government see cryptocurrency like Bitcoin? Well, uh, the short answer will be that there is no cryptocurrency in question here. So we have indi- individuals talking about this. We have some communications. Honestly, uh, as it's a bit out of my uh, focus at the moment, I don't know what the regulation for is, but uh, it, it mm-hmm. could be even that it's prohibited here. I'm not sure. But uh, because in Nigeria is like, you know, yeah, they're saying that, you know, Nigeria might just legalize Bitcoin soon. Like, you know, it's like well, a big uh, that's, adopter uh, of Bitcoin. That might be that. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, this ripples already on the water from Latin America. And mm-hmm. uh, we and Nigeria uh, years, ages ahead of Angola in terms of yeah. adopting online payments. So I believe people first uh, need to maybe much faster than other countries, but I believe Angola have to go through adoption, just the idea, the concept that you pay online for something. And then, of course, uh, eventually uh, the uh, digital currencies will kick in. Makes sense. I think that's a very good uh, thesis because I genuinely feel that, you know, like more and more I talk to entrepreneurs, especially from like slightly smaller economies in terms of size, mm-hmm. right? One of the biggest problems is still payments. Yes. Right. Yes. I mean, uh, you know, it's still like, and it's so, so weird that, you know, like, and especially cross border payments are almost impossible. Like, you know, there's such a scam. You know, we have some, uh, you know, when we have to send money to, let's say, Colombia or something, it's just just crazy how much money you have to spend uh, to, you know, or to send there. So, that's, so I think uh, that's true. I genuinely well, feel that you know, cryptocurrency might be the solution to these uh, these problems. Really. Well, uh, my personal opinion about cryptocurrency that, of course, it's going to keep keep pushing the markets uh, mm. into, into adoption, uh, but uh, so high volatility and uh, the co- quite complex, uh, you know, concept for uh, people with uh, low education. Yeah. Because you have to really understand what is that and uh, all the pros and cons. But I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I don't know. Uh, but uh, Sure. I believe there's certain maturity of markets required to uh, digital currencies to be adopted. Sure. Fair enough. And what is the, how is the state? Like, you know, how are you like, what's your split now? Do you do more food delivery, more grocery delivery? What's your business like today? Okay. So for, we still have majority of transactions from food delivery. Mm-hmm. And uh, for, after being for five years actively on the markets, we uh, Tupuka is well-known brand, and mm-hmm. uh, that's uh, there's no more challenge of signing up restaurants or cafes or bars with us because for them it becomes sort of default action. So right, I have yeah. To, yeah, I have to go online. With whom I go online? I go with Tupuka. Okay, maybe I go with somebody else. We have a little uh, set of uh, competing companies, but still, now it's... But the big companies like Delivery Hero, Uber no, Eats, none no, of them are there. No, none Why? Of them. Well, for the reasons that you just mentioned, that yeah. those cross-border forex exchange transactions operations, uh, then the movements of capital... Uh, expatriation of capital it's under strict yeah. limitations by government and basically uh companies more than welcome to invest everybody mm-hmm. accept it's like but it's it's hard process 
not easy as in many other countries, but uh, you're welcome. However, when it will go to the point about mm -hmm. expatriating capital, it's that, very difficult. Uh, look, people, uh, it's, it's hard to explain the gravity of these difficulties. It's like very difficult. I don't know. It's like hell difficult, uh, which is not acceptable for business. You, you, can, you have to make, if it's international company, the, you cannot just keep pumping money in. You have to provide some cash flow. Both sides, it should be flowing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's limitation. And on top of it, the uh, infrastructure. The infrastructure, well, in capital city, you have some infrastructure. If you go mm -hmm. to provinces that become extremely challenging, so to uh, as being in this hyper local last mile delivery business for now several years in Angola, I see like you know, and I know that I feel all this from the groundwork from fields. How hard is it? What's the uh, challenges for these uh, motor boys or for drivers mm -hmm. for everybody? Uh, when rain season is coming, it's just uh, sometimes it's nightmare uh, on the road. And, uh, and is it because out of the, the capital city, like, uh, you know, the infrastructure roads and everything is not good? Uh, well, I, I believe for a limit, st strict limitation in terms of infrastructure for, uh, for business like uh, Tupuka or for online business goes in two, from two places, the difficulties first is that of course the roads the? and the second is the internet penetration internet oh. penetration uh for so even in the capital city we have neighborhoods where signal is not stable or weak where we have absolute blind spots and, and why and, is it because yeah. you know you guys are like very high gdp the government does is not spending on infrastructure well uh the I believe one of the reasons is that is the monopoly, because uh, mm -hmm. even though uh, new company recently received the license to operate in Angola, a, a new telco, but for 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 years there is there are two companies, Unitel and Movicel, that dominate the market, and uh, but Movicel has small share, so we're practically talking about single company. Monopoly, and uh, yeah. they even though they invested and keep investing in the new towers and increased coverage, uh, it, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's not as bad as in many other African countries I was uh, visiting personally, but uh, it's still not enough. It's still not enough. Plus, uh, it's as a part of internet penetration. It's not only about the signal; it's also about the super expensive uh, cost of data price, no, price. Uh, not cost price cost that's a different question and uh, devices so smartphones still mm -hmm. uh, even though the, the quantity of smartphones is growing that's a big big investment for someone who wants to you know just uh, start uh, to yeah. start because it's a decent smartphone it will cost uh, here at least one hundred dollars, and uh, one hundred dollars is uh, it's uh, it's one month's salary for many people, so it's uh, it's hard. And how's the and you guys are funded, right? You have raised funding, and I believe you have some uh, Chinese well, investors. Well, uh, that's uh, something else to know about Angola, and uh, mm -hmm. investment and foreign investment in particular. Uh, mm -hmm. We practically bootstrapping, bootstrapping through whole our history, and we had two small angel investors in the beginning with very like uh, small uh, entrance uh, amount, and uh, we had we had some advancements for large investments. I cannot disclose disclose the amount, but sure. that 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 didn't work out as we wanted, so we were not able to close the round. And uh, the the difficulty that we have 
we know from our like you know from our uh, uh, partners businesses or from our competition it's extremely hard for everybody in Angola to get funding because mm-hmm. uh, to, uh, online business is the smart business it requires technology knowledge it requires uh, knowledge of uh, processes that uh, a lot that's that very different from traditional business mm-hmm. and uh, f- uh, people don't have uh, even local investors without without this knowledge even with the money they without understanding they don't go for it they are interested they like it but they don't go for it they they looking for something else so uh, the bottom line is that this is also a limitation for the markets that uh, on top of infrastructure, which uh, mm. that's complete, this, this fact completes the picture of Angola, like what is the market is. Potential, mm. yes. Uh, demands, yes. All the normal challenges, of course. But infrastructure, internet penetration, High price for the, the per megabyte, for, and uh, and that's all makes it extremely challenging. But let me tell you, it makes it also extremely interesting. That's what drives us to make the difference. And okay, and what what's your ambition? Where do you guys want to be in five years? You know, so- well. Uh, well that's a very simple question to answer because uh, we've been f- working on this five years plan for a while and that was part of our uh, f- uh, financing rounds that we've been working on and uh, so we're looking f- to become looking forward to become a regional player uh, mm-hmm. in the subdeck region which includes uh, pretty much all countries on the south from uh, from Tanzania and Angola down to South Africa uh, mm-hmm. all southern Africa and uh, to provide uh, last mile and hi- hyper local delivery and logistic services uh, and uh, food and other con- uh, cons- consumer goods and uh, f- to build the system where uh, and also to make that uh, regional uh, operation uh, uh, work like Cross border, so to turn from hyper local uh, business into international e commerce where people from one African country can order and get stuff delivered from other African country, and uh, just to become okay, I can go for it, why not? Like become South African Amazon, something like this. And is that a big business? Like, you know, is, is there's a lot of cross border demand between African countries? Yes, how? But uh, there, there is very, very wild state of transactions between, like cross border. Because, well, mm-hmm. let me tell you, uh, the most famous story about cross border transactions is the story of relationship between DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, and Congo. Angola. Well, the the amount of uh, traffic of goods through the border is humongous. Is it controlled? No. What the volume of mm. these transactions? Millions of dollars, I'm quite sure. It goes from to going to, to selling the cars or moving the matches or tires or food. Everything goes. So the, the challenge here is to uh, organize it, to get support from governments to you know, make uh, cross-border uh, transactions easy and simple. And uh, to to have infrastructure like roads, warehouses, and uh, custom services uh, that's not fleece you when you go with your stuff through the border, but actually help you to cross and with decent taxes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, that's uh, there's a lot of things to build to improve, but uh, the there's definitely market that require tendency. so basically it's all all kind of unorganized similar to what is there is in india it's changing but you know little well bit. i i i believe that uh yeah so that would be the simplest definition it is organized and this is quite wild but people making money and uh 
we we know tons of stories about successes in this kind of business. So mm-hmm. to to make it viable, to make it accessible for uh, you know ordinary people, that's the goal. Yeah, makes sense. So have you ever been to India? Not yet. So I think you need to come to India, and I need to come to Angola, man. <laughs> Well, that uh, sounds like plan. <laughs> let's. So let, how's let's... how's the COVID how's the COVID situation in Angola? Are things? Uh... Well, uh, uh, it gets better. Uh, one okay. of the indication is that country uh, been able to secure quite steady supply of vaccines. Vaccines. Uh, okay. se- several kinds of vaccines now uh, available. And by the way, if you, were, if you were in India, Angola would have been vaccinated in three days. So India is vaccinating yeah. about 10 million people a day. Goodness. But you have a population of 1.4 billion or what is it? I don't know. Big yeah. one. <laughs> exactly. <That's... laughs> Angola would be popu- uh, vaccinated one day. Yeah. Well, uh, scale it down to us. Like, uh, and uh, yeah. Angola is doing not that, uh, not that bad. Not and, bad. Uh, yeah. the, the, the recent... Uh, I think it was uh, on 1st of September when governments uh, further uh, released or lifted limitations. So Mm -hmm. the public gathering now allowed and uh, all the restaurants open whole day uh, and the beaches and pools open. So uh, it's it's practically life as normal. We have limitations on uh, so for example, if the workforce in the offices cannot be more than 75% in single day, so we rotate people in the office. But uh, mm. we see that situation gets better as our sales go down <laughs> because COVID, uh, which is well-known fact now that it helped online businesses tremendously. Yeah, especially delivery businesses, yeah. E- exactly. So we've been enjoying much more attention from customers and mm-hmm. now people go back to their habits i'm not saying that everybody go uh like uh, abandoning online it's not true but people just like to shop man that's it they just like to go shopping <laughs> i mean see i think it's it's like one of those things man like what do you do you can't go out you can't be in nature i mean that's like you know, I think I've I've never bought so many shoes in my life. Like I've not still bought a lot by by you know most definitions. But maybe I bought like four or five pairs of shoes last year. But I'm not a I, I don't buy clothes, I don't buy shoes, I'm not a person, you know. So for me it's like you know, you buy one pair of shoes, you break that and then you buy the next one. Right? But you know, so uh but I think this time there's nothing to do, right? And I'm not a shopper, right? So, (laughs) you know, I was hoping that, you know, iPhone 13 would be nice and, you know, I would want to buy it. But there's like literally nothing different from the 12. So, I can't really do that. (laughs) Well, good for you. (laughs) Well, look, yeah, please go. Yeah, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was saying that uh, the the whole situation with COVID was, Mm -hmm. uh, well, with all this, absolute nightmare things that was happening to families to mm-hmm. like to for families and uh, to loved ones uh being separated over you know distance and uh, all this uh different psychology psychological problems when people work remotely etc it gave the something good to people and uh i believe it's all over the world like this it's it's brought people to understanding of the benefits of online services. And that's helped uh, those online services or those delivery services to better understand customers eh, and to uh, improve improve themselves. And that's eventually, even when people go back to their normal uh, habits of going to markets, etc., people will still remember and still have this experience of online shopping and most importantly, convenience of doing so. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, what, what, is, uh, what is 
we try to do here now in Angola, in, in our uh, small but uh, promising market, is that to make people appreciate this opportunity that uh, you can save your time, you can have contactless delivery, you can have uh, many things that's uh, safe and secure for you and uh, w- while you can enjoy your family or your life, basically. So that's Makes uh, sense. that's a good thing uh, still should be found in this bad situation with COVID. Makes sense, man. Um, so yeah, I mean, and to be honest, I, I would like to tell you one other thing. Sure. So I love your LinkedIn uh, posts. You're always posting something that is very informative and good. So Thank generally, you. like, you know, LinkedIn is always mostly crap. But, you know, I think <laughs> your posts are very, very good. Thank you. Uh, I just do this very simple rule. If I like it, really like it, I believe that my friends and people whom I follow and who's followed me might yeah. be genuinely interested. Uh, if I'm not interested, no, I just keep it. Yeah, I think, see, the reason is because you post something generally which is related to learning new things about marketing, growth and stuff, right? And most people are like posting stories which are obviously fake. <laughs> right, they're like you know, <laughs> you know, I called up a HR recruiter and this and that. I think it's, so. Yeah, it's cool, man. Well, uh, yeah, I, I I believe that, and uh, I actually want to uh, you know pay you back again uh, with uh, thanking you for that opportunity that I had uh, two three months ago joining your uh, clubhouse uh, uh, meeting. Right. Always uh, welcome, man. Anytime. Uh, and that was, you know, when you've, uh, you've been answering questions from uh, fresh employees of Jungle Works and uh, uh, different people about what's the vision, where we go, why we're doing things. Uh, and uh, all this idea and vision of empowering people, empowering entrepreneurs, uh, helping people to realize that they actually can have a good start having so little and uh, that they need to learn learn things, learn and keep learning yeah. and uh, sharing the knowledge. And that was, uh, I was resonating with this very closely and uh, that gave me some boost. So thank you. Welcome. And I, I genuinely feel that, you know, far more entrepreneurs are focused on funding than learning. I mean, you know, I, I think sometimes it's easier to get customers than, than investors. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the learning thing is, I believe, uh, maybe it's not in the essential, in the list of essential things that people realize for themselves. Like nobody wants to feel pain. Everybody wants to, yeah, be, yeah. you know, like uh, healthy and uh, sleep well, eat well, etc. And learning somewhere down there, I don't know. But in fact, it's what makes difference. And uh, when we work as a team in Tupuka, uh, honestly, uh, I spent 80% of my time this year on mm-hmm. mentoring and learning yeah. myself from from uh, from the guys, from the teams. Uh, because, uh, well, if you keep doing the routine that you learned once, that it brings you exactly where this routine is useful, it never brings you to a new, better place. So yeah. keep, just keep keep learning is the way. Makes sense, man. I think it's a it's a great uh, great point uh, you know that you mentioned. Like constant learning is super critical. So, so yeah, man. With that, I think uh, you know it was really good catching up with you, man. Uh, and hopefully, you. you know this COVID thing is over, and we'll be meeting uh, hopefully in person soon. And uh, yeah, best of luck to, to you and to Puka. And uh, I hope you guys keep uh, you know scaling new heights. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me in this conversation. And uh, and and as like. always, any any feedback on Jungle Works product or stack, you know, feel free. No matter how critical it is, you know, make sure that you can tell me anytime. Well, you don't need to worry about that because I have all your guys in my phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we, Shashank, and we talk- in fact, <laughs> so Shashank told me yesterday that you know he has made you his elder brother, and he's like you know <laughs> talking to you every two weeks and understanding what how can we improve our product. So, so I, I must acknowledge here 
you know so eugene is one of the people who has like really helped us build the product you know especially yellow so i think thanks a lot for that man well uh pleasure because uh, i'm going to keep doing this <laughs> so he he we... used to be a tough customer but i think now we are more of you know on the same page like you know i mean we have learned so much from him from a product perspective that i can't th- thank him enough uh you can count on me i'm going to keep pushing <laughs> Don't worry man we will love our customers who keep pushing us in the right direction so thanks a lot thank you take so, care so thank you very much eugene uh, for doing this and uh, yeah good night you know have uh, stay safe and you know even if you go to russia i know the vaccination there is not very high so stay safe you know so, you. so take care bye bye man T- take care bye yeah talk soon take care bye bye